Today we're going to go on an adventure. We're going to see things we've never seen before. We're going to hear things we've never heard before. But first, I'd like to talk with you about my son David, our son David, Margie's and my son David. Um, this talk is dedicated to David and to life. Every person that I see here, to me, is a David. And every person that I can help is a David. And when I help you, my David lives. So, this is a little something about how a young man struggled to overcome seemingly insurmountable odds. And he became a living legend to those people who knew him and who knew who, and who, knew who he was. In the struggle to teach David to crawl and to walk and to run and to learn how to live, I learned a new respect for life, plus a rededication and a deeper concern for my fellow man. So whenever I can help my fellow man, my David lives. That's the reason my, why my books are dedicated to enzymes, because enzymes to me means life. Nothing, and I'll be talking with you about this, nothing that goes on in the body, nothing that goes on in a plant, in an animal, can exist without enzymes. So enzymes mean life. So this is the true story of David's life and his death. David uh, was born uh, in Minneapolis, Minnesota when I was getting a uh, degree in rehabilitation. And we moved to Rochester, New York, and I was on the staff at the Eastman Dental Center, the University of Rochester Medical School, and my main area of research and lecture was in cleft palate and maxillofacial deformities. And we lived in a big old house in Pittsburgh, that's a suburb of uh, Rochester, New York. And um, one Sunday morning, before we were going to church, uh, we heard this thump, 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 thump. And so Margie and I got out of bed and we ran to the top of the stairs and there we saw David at the bottom of the stairs, vomiting blood, and every time he tried to get up, he'd fall down. Every time he tried to get up, he'd fall down. So we rushed him to the hospital and they had a brain scan and he had a spinal tap. Ultimately, he was, re he was released from the hospital, not because he was cured, but because they had nothing for him. And I asked the doctors, I said, is he going to live? He said, we don't know. I said, how long will he live? We don't know. So they just released him to us, to our care, and that was it. And so as a researcher, I searched the country, I searched the world to find various programs on rehabilitation and on working with neuromuscularly handicapped individuals, brain injured neuromuscularly handicapped individuals. And the, the final diagnosis, as far as David was concerned, was acute cerebellar ataxia. He got hit in the back of the head and he walked like a cerebral palsy child. So what I, I developed a, a um, fun palace for him. I got six inch sponge rubber uh, matting, four by eight feet. And I, we had a foyer in our place, in our house. And I made this foyer his magic room. And Margie put sheets over the foyer. And um, that was his magic room. And so every time David would stand up, he'd fall down. Stand up and he'd fall down. So providentially, I, I found this Dr. Temple Fay, who was the director and the head of neurology at the um, medical school in, at Temple University. And he had developed a program called Cross Crawl, Cross Patterning. And this was a program where you re-educate the neural pathways of brain injured children, neuromuscularly handicapped children. And so we worked with David on, on this program over and over and over again. And so we lived in, in Rochester. And then the next, subsequently we moved to Cleveland and I worked on my PhD in rehabilitation with an emphasis on uh, anatomy and neuroanatomy. And I used to work on um, 
monkeys and, and checking their brains and seeing how the, um, the various areas of the brain worked, etc. And so David then, we, we kept working with him and working with him and then we moved to Chicago and we put, uh, I, I thought, why did I move to Chicago? Because I wanted to get a degree in chiropractic because chiropractic emphasized the neuromuscular coordination. So um, we, we moved to Chicago and David then was uh, uh, put in a swim pool. And what I found was in uh, swimming, David could replicate the undulating movement of the child when they first learned to crawl and to walk. And this is the concept of cross patterning and cross crawl, as you probably know. So the undulating movement of cross crawl and cross patterning was just like the butterfly. And the freestyle was like the um, homolateral, the contralateral movement of an individual. When they walk, when you walk, you walk, you put your left foot forward, but you put your right arm forward. It's contralateral. So um, David, in the water, it was an anti-gravity um, situation, and so it was very easy for uh, me to work with him. And we enrolled him at David at the um, VRIL YMCA. And he just took to the water, and he not only did so well, he took second place in the 50-yard butterfly for 25-year-olds. And then he, we moved to, um, and I taught anatomy at, at the National College of Chiropractic and was director of research there. And then we moved to um, Oregon, and David continued swimming, and he was ranked fourth in the nation as a 10-year-old in the 200 IM, individual medley, and he was in the top 10 in the 50 free. And he stepped out of a pool, and as a 10-year-old, he did a 507 mile. I doubt if I could even walk around the block in that period of time. But anyway, so he continued to grow, and we went up to uh, Portland, and he um, swam for David Douglas, and they were ranked 10th in, in the nation. And then we, uh, he went to uh, Jesuit, and he ran in, the, uh, in cross country. And he helped Jesuit to come in third place in cross country. So now he is beginning to develop his coordination. His coordination is better. He's moving along. And he wants to play football now. His younger brother was all Catholic, all American, a Jesuit, and was recruited and received a five-year scholarship at the University of Miami. His older brother was all conference at Portland State University as a fullback. And so David sees his two brothers, and I'm trying to keep them away from contact sports, and he says, I've got to play football. So I had him examined by a neurosurgeon, and it was, he passed, it was okay, I said, David, if, if you pass, if the neurosurgeon says it's okay for you to play, you can play. So he did. And so he went down to Santa Clara. And the, now he's a boy of 6'2 and a half, 6'2 and a half, 230 pounds, and he runs like a deer. And when, after practice, when the team would circle the field, David would do it twice. He would, he would make two laps around while all the others were doing one at the same time and finish in front of them. So anyway, uh, the football uh, was, he was doing very well in, in uh, football at Santa Clara and they were ranked fourth in the nation and they were going down to um, Cal State Northridge and if they won at Cal State Northridge they would go to the uh, national playoffs. And so the game went back and forth and back and forth. And then with two minutes to go, two minutes to go, Santa Clara was ahead by two points. When all of a sudden the scat back for Cal State cut around right end and was gone for an apparent touchdown. When out of nowhere comes this flash of lightning from the other side of the field, knocking him out on the two yard line, thus saving the game. And the crowd goes wild. But nobody notices a boy on the ground vomiting blood. It was David. 
So they took him to the hospital and they had a cursory examination and he was released and he was flown back to Santa Clara and uh, left, left. And so um, on Monday, David m had made West Coast Player of the Week. Now that's over everyone, uh, every school in the Pac-10, that's every school out here, Idaho, Idaho State, you name it. Montana, Montana State, you name it. He was, he was, he was West Coast Player of the Week. So his teammates and his coach went over to kid him. They knock on the door, no answer. They knock on the door, no answer. Open the door, there they find David lying on the floor, reaching out for the telephone, dead. And one would say, well, you know, how useless this was and, and how terrible this was. Well, David has shown us that, that life is worth living and that every time we can help you, I can help you. I can help you through enzymes. I can help you in chiropractic or in rehabilitation or whatever it is, over at church, in the streets, whatever it might be, my David lives. So, without further ado, have you ever been on an adventure? Today, we're going to go on an adventure. We're going to see things we've never seen before. We're going to hear things we've never heard before. Prepare to take a fantastic voyage. A voyage to better health, to longer life, and to fewer illnesses. Now, my mother lived until she was 96. And we went back to Peoria, Illinois for a funeral. And when I was back there, I saw so many of my friends exhibiting these red badges of courage. You know, the, uh, the scar from open heart surgery as a result of what? Stroke or some sort of a problem, okay? A heart attack. And so I thought to myself, I'd like you to close your eyes and think about this. Close your eyes and visualize this. You're in your home. You feel a crushing sensation in your chest. You feel intense pain. You could die. You call the ambulance. You struggle to the telephone and you call the ambulance. The ambulance ride is a very bumpy one to the hospital. And bam, they open the, car, the doors and you go down those shiny halls in the hospital. And then bam, you go through the <clears throat> operating room door and they <clears throat> there you are. And they slit your chest open and split it open like two car doors. And then after the surgery is over and they wheel you out, the doctor is sharpening his knives because he knows that if you don't change your ways, you're going to be back. So he lifts up the phone and he says, he calls his real attorney, he says, George, he says, you know that strip mall you wanted me to invest in? I can do it. <laughs> you know that, um, then he calls his, his car dealer and he says, Sam, he says, you know that Mercedes you wanted me to buy. I can get it. And then he, uh, he calls his, uh, his uh, stockbroker and he says, um, George, he said, uh, you know that stock you wanted me to, to, to invest in? He said, I'll do it. He can do all that because why? Cardiovascular disorders in this country is big, big business. According to the American Heart Association, Americans spent 18 billion, not million, 18 billion dollars alone on bypass surgeries. And over 448,000 coronary bypass surgeries were performed with a mean cost of $112,000. That amounts to billions of dollars every year. Americans, the public, they're suffering from health-wise and they're suffering dollar-wise. The three top killers in this country are cardiovascular disease, that's a death every 33 minutes, the cancer, a death every minute, and a stroke, a death every minute. So what can we do about these problems? What can we do? Seems hopeless. No, it's not. Take enzymes, natural enzymes. That's the answer, right, Bobby D? Right. right. 
take enzymes to jumpstart your day, jumpstart your life. What did you have for breakfast? How about dinner last night? Did you avoid something on your plate because you know you can't eat it? Do certain foods give you stomach upset, indigestion, gas? Does the food you love not love you back? But what causes these problems? What causes gas? Well, gas is caused when we can't digest the food we eat. If the foods don't break down, they reach the intestines in large sizes where they become a banquet for the bacteria. The, few, the food begins to putrefy, giving off carbon dioxide and methane and gas. Gas is a symptom of a dis-ease. Think of this, a dis-ease of function. It's your body telling you, hey, you've got a problem. Our bodies aren't functioning properly. In fact, the National Cancer Institute recognizes the relationship between diet and disease and suggests that we eat certain foods to fight disease. Now, but these very foods the National Cancer Institute recommends to fight cancer and other diseases are great gas producing products such as broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, cauliflower, rutabaga, turnips, high fiber uh, cereals and breads, even pretzels and bagels and pastas, all the foods that you love to eat are cancer, I mean are gas producers. So some people say gas makes their lives a living smell and they change their behavior. They avoid places, they won't go out with their friends, they won't go to restaurants, they won't keep dates for fear they will embarrass themselves. Well, what about indigestion? It too occurs when we can't digest what we eat. So, some people say antacids, you take antacids, but over-the-counter antacids, traditional antacids, don't solve the problem. They only cover it up. And in some cases, antacids may be the worst thing you can do. Why not treat the problem instead of the symptoms? When we avoid certain foods, it's the same thing as saying, I can't produce enough enzymes to break down my foods. So, what can we do? What's the answer? The answer is, take enzymes, those genies in the bottle. It's the best kept secret. Did you know that there are probably more research done, scientific and medical research studies done on enzymes and enzyme therapy than any other aspect of human behavior. And yet enzymes are the least discussed and least utilized phenomenon of medical science. It's the best kept secret. But we're gonna change that, aren't we? Now, Enzymes are critical for life. You know, there's, there are more than 3,000 different enzymes that are, have already been identified in the human body. Without them, nothing works. No person, no plant, no animal exists without enzymes. They are the fountains of life. The ancient Greeks called them the magic force. Enzymes are catalysts. And as catalysts, enzymes can accelerate, accelerate a reaction or they can cause a reaction to take place that might not occur without them. Enzymes are like oxygen a fire needs to burn. Without the oxygen, the wood would, wouldn't burn. Without enzymes, nothing in the body works. Enzymes are substances that occur naturally in all living things, including the body and animals and in plants. And they all need and contain enzymes. Human beings need enzymes to breathe, for reproduction, for growth, for blood coagulation, for di digestion, to fight disease and injury, to fight all sorts of conditions. But enzymes are also food potentiators. All foods have potential nutrients. Enzymes have the ability to turn potential nutrients into available nutrients. Okay, Ex an example of this. 
Carrots contain beta carotene, but we can't get the beta carotene out if we can't unlock it from the carrot cells. Therefore, we won't benefit from the carrot nutrients. It's like Fort Knox. You have to unlock the door in order to get the treasure out. Ah, excuse me. Enzymes break down foods into smaller sizes, making them easier to digest. In this way, enzymes release the nutrients in the foods. Without digestive enzymes, food would go in your mouth and out the back end undigested. The genian enzymes makes the digestive system work. Enzymes are present in every phase of digestion, and without them, we just couldn't digest what we eat. Enzymes are the key to life and to health. Now, in order to change our foods into materials we can use, our bodies require several kinds of enzymes. And these are proteases, amylases, and lipases. And you can say, well, there are 3,000 different kinds of enzymes. There are. But in order to change foods, <laughs> we have to have the proteases, the amylases, and the lipases. Some of these enzymes are naturally manufactured by our stomach, our pancreas, and the liver. Other enzymes that the body does not produce are available in fresh raw fruits and vegetables. Okay, how does this really work? Let's take a look at what happens when we eat a meal. Think of your digestive system as a long conveyor belt. From the time you eat your food, it hits the landing. The landing pad is your tongue. From that time, it reaches the various cells of the body or passes out as waste. Your food is going through various changes. Your teeth begin to break down the food. Saliva, this is the reason why somebody who has false teeth or has poor um, um, approximation of the mandible and maxilla, the teeth, has has also has digestive problems because they aren't able to break down the foods as well. And you know that in aging, we're not only losing, and I'll talk about this in a moment, the activity level of enzymes and the amount of enzymes, but also our ability to break down foods is reduced. So, to actually experience firsthand saliva's action on starch, put a cracker or a piece of bread in your mouth and try this at home. Chew it and hold it in your mouth for a short time. It will begin to taste sweet. Isn't that something? And the reason for that is because the amylase in your saliva is breaking the starch down into maltose, a sugar. Now, think of the mouth as the food cement mixer. Tapakada, tapakada, tapakada. Rolling the foods around, breaking them down into smaller pieces, and mixing them with the mouth's enzymes. Chewing is critical for digestion because enzymes only act on the surface of the particles. And remember that, you know, uh, we, we, when you, let's say, are preparing foods, I always tell you, not to heat your, I'm going to talk about that, heating your foods. Well, let's say if, you, say if you have broccoli or Brussels sprouts and you blanch your foods, you've killed all the enzymes on the surface, all right? But you haven't killed the enzymes in the specific product. So, that, so there again, that's an example why, of why we should chew and chew and chew and break up various food particles. The more time spent chewing, the more surface area of the food will be exposed to enzymes. The result, better digestion. Some ex experts say chew each piece of food 50 times before swallowing, but who has time for that? After you swallow your food, it travels down the es esophagus to the stomach, kerplunk. The lining of the stomach is loaded with glands supplying hormones, hydrochloric acid, and guess what? Enzymes, essential for digestion. 
the, in the stomach, the food is broken down into increasingly smaller particles. What's left of the food is now called chyme. You know that song, my chyme is your chyme? Anyway, um, the chyme travels from the stomach into the small intestine. With the help of enzymes, this is where the greatest amount of digestion and absorption take place. From here, nutrients are absorbed into the bloodstream and the chyme travels to the large intestine where digestion is completed and the waste products are excreted from the body. The purpose then again of the gastrointestinal system is, is very simple. Number one, to extract nutrients from the food. Number two, to digest them into units that are small enough to be absorbed. And number three, to eliminate the waste products. But we're all different, and your health and my health are different. My digestion is different. What happens if Mother Nature has forgotten to give you any or enough enzymes? You'll have poor digestion. And what about lifestyle? Well, if you have poor digestion, it may be because of lifestyle. In this fast-paced world, 24 hours each day isn't enough. Right, Bobby D? Not enough to get everything done. And because we don't have enough time, we make sacrifices. We make sacrifices in our quality of life, and that means diet. <coughs> We eat on the run. We eat fast foods. We eat fat. We eat uh, a little, a little, little fiber. And we don't exercise. And we're under constant stress. This all has a devastating impact on digestion and therefore on our health. In fact, according to the National Cancer Institute, at least 35% of all cancer is directly related to diet. 35%. Aging is another problem. As we age, our body's enzymes decrease in quality and activity level. The speed of aging is directly influenced by our lifestyle and our diet. An enzyme-poor diet can overtax an already deficient system, thus causing us to age faster. Why is it that some people eat nutritious foods and yet are continually tired? develop chronic diseases, and or age prematurely. Why is that? Why is it that you can eat cauliflower and your cousin Katie can't? Quite possibly it's poor digestion and poor absorption of food. In other words, an individual could be eating a healthy diet, but the nutrients aren't getting to the body. Digestion is faulty. There's a roadblock on the digestive conveyor belt and the nutrients aren't getting through. Remember, you're not what you eat. You're what you absorb. According to the National Cancer Institute, we can improve our health by following the food pyramid and by eating fresh fruits and fresh vegetables and whole grains, foods rich in enzymes. However, many of those foods produce gas. Also, adapting to a fresh food diet is very, can be very hard if you're not used to it. In fact, any sudden change in diet can affect the digestive tract. You know what happens when you start eating cabbage or cauliflower, don't you? <laughs> and keep in mind that just because food might be fresh doesn't mean it's alive. What happens and what keeps foods alive? Enzymes. What is it? Enzymes, say it again, enzymes, that's right. Enzymes from foods might have been enough for our forefathers, but in today's fast-paced, stress-filled society, truck farms where the fruits and vegetables were picked the same, same day as they were eaten are only fond, fond memories. They went out with a tin type and Henry Ford's Model T. Today, fresh fruits and fresh vegetables are shipped by trucks and by trains and by planes hundreds and maybe thousands of miles before being consumed by you and me. In addition, farmers today add artificial fertilizers as well as 
pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, and other sites that were unknown or unused by our forefathers. And what about genetically modified seeds, genetically modified foods? What sort of an effect does that have on us? In addition to that, if it's not bad enough, today's food is no longer cooked fresh in your mother's kitchen. It's canned and frozen and dried and processed and reconstituted and probably stripped of all nutrients and enzymes before it gets to your mouth. Remember, processed foods are enzyme dead because the heat used to process these foods destroys the active enzymes. Any heating over 140 degrees Fahrenheit will kill all the active enzymes. Remember that the next time you cook your foods. A depletion of digestive enzymes might not be the cause of every stomach malady, but doctors find that it is a contributing factor in many. Now these are some statistics. According to the 1993 statistics from the National Digestive Information Clearinghouse, many of us suffer from digestive disturbances. 66 million cases of heartburn have been reported each month. 22.3 million, 22 million workdays lost due to chronic indigestion. 9 million workdays lost due to acute indigestion. 20 million cases of gallstones and 20 million cases of irritable bowel syndrome. That's quite an amount. Because of our dead processed foods plus polluted air and water, supplements may be the only way we can ensure a sufficient enzyme intake. So who needs enzymes? And who need, needs enzyme supplements? Everyone, especially anyone who eats cooked foods, eats fast foods, has poor eating habits, is overweight, wants to stay energetic, suffers from stomach upset, wants to stay young and live longer, and cares about nutrition and their health. Well, what about the supplements? One of the best ways to supplement an overworked digestive system is to take natural digestive enzymes. We can now get enzymes in tablet form to help digest all the major food groups, the proteases, the amylases, and the lipases. Now proteases, think of the proteases as a long chain of protein. Protein is made up of 20 different amino acids. Think of the amino acids as, as a long chain of sausage links. The protease enzymes can split the links, breaking them apart and allowing us to digest the protein we eat and absorbing its nutrients into the body. Lipase is another problem, okay? Lipase breaks down fats such as oils, lecithin, and cholesterol. What about amylase? Amylase chews up carbohydrates such as breads, pastas, and sugars. Now, this is a special en uh, am um, amylytic enzyme. Um, li uh, lactase is an amylase enzyme that, can, uh, that people lack. Many people lack this. In lactase in, uh, intolerance or lactase, in lactose intolerance or lactase insufficiency, the body does not produce enough lactase, the enzyme responsible for breaking down lactose, the milk sugar. Without lactase, the lactose in milk and other dairy foods travels to the colon and sits undigested, fermenting, causing diarrhea and pain. People who lack lactase enzyme can't drink milk or eat dairy products. Lactose intolerance is more common among Native Americans, African Americans, Hispanics, Asian Americans, and less common among Americans of Northern, American, uh, Northern European descent. Fortunately, lactase-treated milk is available, and so, is lactase, so are lactase supplements which can help to supply the missing enzymes. And I think you have those, don't you? Oh, yeah. So they have them here. So 
you can see how important supplements are in today's society. As I said, without digestive enzymes, our, our lives could be a living smell. <laughs> so, how are enzymes used? Well, enzymes are used as digestive therapy, and there are systemic enzyme therapy. Okay? They're used for two reasons, for digestion and for systemic purposes. Now, what is systemic enzyme therapy? Okay, I just, a little aside, um, a Dr. Max Wolf, a German, uh, developed the concept of systemic enzyme therapy. And he found that uh, actually he, um, a, a, a man by the name of Dr. Beard used the, he squashed the pancreases of um, pigs and of calves and he used, he gave that to individuals with, he injected it in individuals who had cancer and they had very positive results. From that, Dr. Wolf developed his concept of systemic enzyme therapy. But instead of injecting them, and you can inject uh, enzymes, but you can also take the enzymes orally. All right? So systemic enzyme therapy is the treatment of the body's systems, all the systems of the body with enzymes, particularly proteolytic enzymes. Circulation, digestion, the immune system, the respiratory system, all these systems. God bless you. Bye. Bye-bye. The advantages of systemic enzyme therapy are, are these. Now, this is the reason why you say, gee, why am I taking so many different kinds of enzymes? I, I really am quite a proponent of um, systemic enzyme therapy and the use of different enzymes. And the reason for that is because these different enzymes work synergistically. They have different pHs, they have different activity levels, and so they work together. All right? So this is the rationale for using multiple enzyme combinations. The systemic enzyme therapy improves the health systematically, uh, systemically and it maintains wellness and it fights diseases and injuries systemically. That means at the cellular level. What about the timing? This is something important and maybe you need to write this down, but if you're taking something, some enzymes um, for digestion, if you're using enzymes for digestion, then you take the enzymes 30 minutes before your meal or you take them during your meal. If you're taking the enzymes systemically, then you take them 90 minutes after a meal or 90 minutes before a meal. In other words, between breakfast and lunch, between lunch and dinner, and then before you go to bed at night. Those, that's the best way as far as timing is concerned. Now, systemic en enzyme therapy, to be used systemically, enzymes must be absorbed into the bloodstream in order to be effective and they must be coated or they must be formulated to be acid resistance uh, to be acid resistant and you can ask the people here about this okay they can show you and tell you why this is so absorption but it is it is critical that they're either enterically coated or they uh, have a, they've been formulated to be acid resistant. Why? Because in going through the stomach, the stomach is very acid, right? And so it would break down the enzymes in the stomach. And so to allow those enzymes to get through the stomach, to pass into the small intestine, through the brush border, and into the circulatory system, where you want them to go systemically, and then they go to various organs of the body, you have to have this enteric coating or they have to be formulated with an acid resistant formula. Now, absorption. Absorption of intact long chain protein molecules was once, once thought impossible. However, research by Stefan, Streichan, Kleiner, Seifert, and you'll find in my books how I refer to these gentlemen here. I worked with these men 
my research, God bless them, is due to the information that I obtained from people like this, from Dr. Carl Ransberger and others. And uh, these men were incredibly knowledgeable, incredibly knowledgeable. But these gentlemen have proven that absorption of enzymes such as bromelain, trypsin, chymotrypsin, papain, is in fact absorbed into your system. The main method of absorption seems to be penocytosis. Penocytosis is like an elevator. Think of, think of uh, you going into a, an office building on the first floor. <clears throat> you go to the elevator. That's the digestive system. You go into the elevator. The elevator closes. And then you go up to the second floor. And then you, the door opens and you go out the second floor. That's your circulatory system. The elevator is penocytosis. So the, the enzymes go from the digestive system to the circulatory system whole. They're not broken down. Now, the absorption rate. What is the absorption rate? Well, the absorption rate is approximately 20% within six hours. So if you take the enzymes at, um, let's say, 9 o'clock, you know that they're working by 3 o'clock. What are some of the side effects? Well, there are very, very few side effects. And, um, but there can be a feeling of fullness. There can be gas or nausea. The nausea, I've, I've, in my practice, I've never noticed nausea. Never had any patients who had. But it's, it has been stated. There are changes in color and consistency and odor of stool. And that is a possibility. Because bromelain has a, a unique odor. Unique odor. It's easily controlled, though, by reducing the dose level. And remember, as I've said, there are no serious side effects of long-term duration. Avoid enzyme therapy. Well, enzymes should be, uh, systemic enzyme therapy should be avoided f with, uh, for individuals who have hemophilia or other blood uh, clotting disorders. If, they have di uh, di if they're on dialysis. Another thing would be just before and just after surgery. And this can be verified by some of the people in this building. Um, you take the enzymes up to approximately three days before the surgery, and then you don't take the enzymes till approximately three days after the surgery. And then you can start taking the enzymes again. Why is that? Because you want scar tissue to form. You want the, when, when there's surgery, if the two tissues you, uh, are apart, you want them to join. You want them to unite. And you want some scar tissue to form, to unite those tissues. All right? If you were taking proteolytic enzymes at the time of surgery, it would lyse that. And so they wouldn't unite. But after three days, everything's fine. Oh, the other, th the other area uh, that I didn't mention, pork allergies, anticoagulants. Uh, if you're taking anticoagulants, don't, uh, don't take systemic enzyme therapy because they can, um, they, they are fibrinolytic, and so therefore you don't want to interfere with the anticoagulants. Or if you do, do it under the direction of the physician. A nat naturopath in the area um, might be a likely individual to talk to. Um, an another thing would be uh, pork allergies. Um, some of the systemic enzyme therapy products have uh, been formulated with uh, pork and so the pancreas of a pork. And so therefore, um, if you're allergic to pork, then you shouldn't take it. Uh, pregnant or nursing mothers should not take um, systemic enzyme therapy while they are pregnant or while they are nursing. Now, what enzymes... There we are. There are three different keys to systemic enzyme therapy. That's inflammation, circulation, and the immune system. 
inflammation. Now this is a key concept, a key concept. And you can think of this in every situation, every situation that involves inflammation. If I'd hit Bobby D on the shoulder, he'd probably hit me back. But if I'd hit Bobby D on the shoulder, he'd have redness, there'd be swelling, and there'd be pain. Those are the cardinal signs of what? Inflammation. Okay? What is happening? At, at the time that you, after you hit uh, Bobby D, the, uh, there's increased capillary permeability. That's the basis of inflammation. The capillaries at the site of the irritation dilate. That's why you get the redness. All right? Then there's stasis. Nothing can get in, nothing can get out. There's a liberation of fibrin from fibrinogen, and you get this fibrin-forming clot which it obstructs the blood flow, and those are microthrombi. Okay, then there's an increased exudation into the tissue that's called chemotaxis, and there's increased edema, and there's increased pain, just like we discussed. There's obstruction of the arterioles, and this reduces the oxygen getting to the cells. The protective barrier of fibrin is formed around the damaged area, and so nothing can get in and nothing can get out. No, nutri nu no nutrients can get in and no waste products can get out. Now what about the proteolytic enzyme action in this situation? Well, the, the, the proteolytic enzymes liquefy the thrombotic plug, the fibrin plug, through fibrinolytic activity. Okay, it, it, lysing, you know, lysing is breaking up. Okay, so there's an increased capillary permeability, there's improved nu nutrient delivery to the involved tissue, more nutrients reach the area and, revolve the and revive the tissue cells, and then the emetus exudate is reabsorbed, the edema is reabsorbed, and so that the swelling goes down, and the necrotic and other debris is excreted in the lymphatics, and as a result, enzymes reduce the duration of inflammation. I'm going to talk about a study I did at Portland State University in a moment that proves this. The action, and, and it's, it's in the literature, it's in the literature over and over and over again. The action of enzymes on inflammation is why enzymes are so effective in treating sports injuries. But it's not only sports injuries. It's if any one of us was out, Bill, if, you, if you're out cutting the grass and you stumble and you bang your, your, your shin or whatever it is, you know, an inflammation uh, ensues, okay? It can be cutting the grass, working out in the yard, working out in the field, milking the cows, whatever it might be. You know, you still can hurt yourself, but the principles um, are the same. Sprains, strains, inflammation, swelling, pain, bursitis, tendinitis, and fractures. Now, I did a study at Portland State University. And I conducted, it was a double-blind study at Portland State University in cooperation with Leo Marty, the medical director at Portland State University. Now, we did this on football players and their injuries, and it was in preseason. It was during the spring football, so they can really bang you up. An independent orthopedic surgeon and his team were the ones that examined the players before the season started, when they got injured, and they and they alone were the ones who determined when the individuals should, should come back to playing time. And I did not communicate with, nor did Leo Marty con communicate with these orthopedists in one way or another. So, the 64 players on the football team um, were evenly split between a control and experimental group. The experimental group were given 10 orally ingested proteolytic enzymes, and these enzymes were an enzyme mixture of bromelain, papain, trypsin, chymotrypsin, and pancreatin with a bioflavonoid, rutin. <coughs> the control group took 10 sugar tablets, all with identical coatings. 
after practice, each player was given tablets, or, and this is the way it worked. After practice, each player was given the tablets and a glass of orange juice. Now, after practice, they would come by the trainer's office to get their towel to take a shower. And at that time, the trainer would give them a cup of orange juice and these 10 proteolytic enzymes or the 10 placebos. And they would take it in front of the trainer so he would make sure that they took it and they would, he would mark down that they had taken these tablets every time. Okay, now the study indicated, the, this, these are the results. And it's etched in granite because there are studies that were done in Germany with hockey players and you have hockey here, but there's on hockey players, and it had the identically same results. The study results indicated that those players on enzyme therapy, when injured, recovered twice as fast, twice as fast as those players who did not take enzymes. And there were 50% fewer injuries. They recovered twice as fast, and there are 50% fewer injuries. That's phenomenal. The injuries included soft tissue injuries such as strains, sprains, hematomas, and even fractures. Phenomenal. Circulation. Constant, there's a constant dynamic equilibrium between blood coagulation, that's the formation of the blood clots, and fibrinolysis, that's the dissolution of clot, blood clots. The increased fibrinolysis leads to excessive bleeding, while weakened fibrinolysis leads to clot formation, such as thromboses or emboli. This balance is maintained in the body with the help of enzymes. Proteolytic enzymes can help dissolve the clots through thrombolytic activity. They can improve the blood flow the circulation in the capillary system and thereby facilitate elimination of the inflammation products, the waste products. So proteolytic enzyme action, now again, enzymes help maintain the body's balance. They help dissolve clots. They improve blood flow and circulation and they facilitate elimination of the inflammatory products, the waste products. What about the immune system? The immune system is the principal means of detoxification of the body. Now it's composed of macrophages, big eaters. You know, they're like Pac-Men. Boom, 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 boom. I always visualize them as Pac-Men going around, jump, 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 chewing them up. Is that good, Bobby D? Good. <laughs> With the macrophage inhibition, there's more metabolic waste, and the waste accumulates in the blood and the lymphatics. The autoaggression, tissue-bound immune complexes activate a second defense system, the complement system. The whole enzyme cascade is activated. Proteins, proteins uh, are destroyed. The inflammatory response occurs, and that you don't want to have happen. The autoaggressive diseases are initiated, and the body initially attacks itself. That's what an autoaggressive disease is, isn't it? The body attacking itself. So what are some autoaggressive auto diseases? Well, pulmonary thrombosis in the lungs, chronic rheumatoid arthritis or ankylosing spondylitis in the joints, glomerulonephritis in the kidneys, ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease in the uh, chronic intestinal inflammation, uh, multiple sclerosis in the myelin sheath in the nervous system, and of course cancer. Proteolytic enzyme in fighting autoaggressive diseases does the following. They stimulate the immune system. Stimulate the immune system. They activate macrophages and nat natural killer cells, and they increase phagocytosis. They increase the chewing up of the bad guys, the aberrant cells. They degrade and eliminate pathogenic circulating immune complexes and the inflammatory waste products. The result is 
they prevent certain autoimmune diseases and they lessen their severity. Well, think of that. If you have rheumatoid arthritis, <coughs> I had a, um, a doctor who had multiple sclerosis. And by taking this, you know, there's a waxing and a waning. A waxing and a waning. And if you increase the dose level of the proteolytic enzymes, when the pain begins to increase, you'll find that you're able to control it more. You're able to control that pain. It doesn't mean that it's going to go away continually, completely. But it means that you can control that pain. And boy, that seems uh, very good to me. Enzymes can help slow down the degenerative process that causes aging. This relates to cardiovascular disorders, to cancer, and to arthritis. Those are the three big biggies as far as aging is concerned. Now, as far as cardiovascular disease is concerned, this is the number one cause of death in the United States. 34.3% of all deaths in the United States are due to cardiovascular disorders. More than 81 million people in the United States have cardiovascular disorders. And by taking the proteolytic enzymes, this can help them. This can help to control those problems. I'm going to talk about it. Cancer, in 2010, over one and one half million Americans were diagnosed as having cancer. More than, I have cancer. More than 569,000 will have died of cancer in, th in 2010. Arthritis. Over 50 million American adults have arthritis of some sort or other. I'm not talking about ju juvenile arthritis. I'm talking about adults. 50% of the adults 65 or older have arthritis. Cardiovascular disease, cancer, and arthritis are involved in a number of processes, and this includes inflammation, circulation, and the immune system. And if this sounds repetitive, it's because our bodies are repetitive. You can predict. You can predict. But by understanding these processes, you're able to control by understanding the processes, you're able to control. Proteolytic enzymes in cancer. Cancer cells, this is a key. What about metastasis? <laughs> cancer cells are coated with a protein fibrin coating. The coating prevents the body's normal defenses from getting to the cancer cells. Proteolytic enzymes dissolve the coating Thus, the body's defenses, leukocytes and white blood cells, can destroy the cancer and degrade the complement activating immune complexes. So it can degrade what exists, what is trying to break you down, and it will help to build you up. Enzymes can inhibit the growth of primary tumors. They substantially reduce the occurrence of metastases. Why? Because, what did I say? The cancer cells have this protein coat. And the proteolytic enzymes take away that protein coat. They cut it away. So it allows the immune system to destroy the cancer cells. Then they can substantially reduce the recurrence of cancer itself. Building up the body. Enzymes accelerate inflammation without suppressing the immune system. That's a key. If you can do something like many medicines can um, accelerate or can, can, uh, are, are, are used to fight inflammation, but they have an effect on the immune system. The enzymes accelerate inflammation without immunosuppressant. That's a key point. They're, they're valuable during radiation since enzymes can reduce the dose necessary and protect the body against the feared radiation hangover. And in, I'm sure you have friends who have had radiation and you know the hangover that they go through. It's deadly. Enzymes improve blood circulation and thereby 
improve nutrition of the tissue, inhibit thrombi formation, and they stimulate thrombolysis. They improve plasma viscosity. So enzymes are valuable before and after cancer therapy. And I, I, this goes back to some of the things that I talked about before. Why? Because, first of all, the enzymes reveal the cancer cells. They cut away that protein coat around the cancer cells, which allows the doctors to see and to remove the cancer cells much more readily. And they also compensate for weakened immune system following surgery. Almost invariably, after surgery, there is a depression as far as the immune system is concerned. And so they can help as far as that is concerned. So enzymes reduce overall risk of cancer and are effective against breast cancer, lung cancer, cancer of the abdominal cavity, bronchial ca ca uh, cancer, uterine cancer, leukemia, testicular cancer, prostate cancer, uh, urinary bladder cancer, uh, skin cancer, and cancer of connective tissue and the di digestive system. Now I have, I have skin cancer and uh, I was traveling all over the world giving talks in the early 20s, uh, to, uh, the early 2000s, I should say. <laughs> I'm here. See what you do to me, Bobby? But I was traveling all over the world, all over the country, uh, giving talks in various areas, and, and God was very good to us. But I noticed I had a little bump on my shoulder. And I went to a, uh, Margie and I went to the medical doctor and he referred me to a plastic surgeon. They re removed the, the uh, tumor and it was diagnosed as malignant melanoma. I went to a gentleman who was a specialist uh, and who had been trained through Sloan Kettering Institute and his um, procedure was surgical. And he wanted to remove all of the lymphs from under my armpit. Um, I had tumors under my arm. He wanted to remove them and all of my lymph glands, God bless you, all of the lymph glands uh, under my armpit. And he said, now, I want you to understand that when I do this, from the time I do this, you're going to have numbness and tingling in your, down your arm, and that's forever. And also, if you get a cut or a scratch or a bruise or anything like that, you get in to see the doctor immediately because your immune system is shot. And so uh, Margie and I talked and we said, eh, I don't think we'll do that. <laughs> so uh, providentially, a good friend of mine was uh, Charlotte Gerson and I had been doing multi-research in, um, on, on German research in, on cancer and their approaches to the treatment of cancer and it's much different than it is here. In any case, um, what we did was to go on the Gerson program and uh, also I, I do not eat any um, red meat. Um, I have um, Um, I, we only eat, or we try to only eat, uh, fish that are uh, deep water fish. Now, occasionally what I'll do now, this was, what, about seven, eight years ago. Occasionally, since we're, we're um, Bobby D is so gracious and he gives us uh, some a soup with, um, what, buffalo soup was it? Elk suit, okay. Elk suit. I, I chewed I chew, 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 it very well. But anyway, it was it was it was an exception. It was an exceptional time, and it's been it's been a, a long time, eight nine years. Okay. But what what I did is when I went home, I I took a voluminous um, number of proteolytic enzymes and a lot of vitamin A um, to offset that. But the main thing is that uh, I, I uh, am um, on a basically a vegan diet and um, I eat occasionally will have um, organic chicken and we skin off all the, um, the um, um, skins. We'll take the, uh, the surface of the, uh, the chicken off and uh, then we, bo uh, we boil it, is it mom? 
What is it? Baker or boil. Baker boil. 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 Very, 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 at a very low level. And so it is not the same as you would find in a restaurant. It is definitely not as cooked as, as, as with as high a degree of temperature, etc. And then the fish, as I say, is from uh, deep ocean fish, none from the Columbia River or any, any place like that. And so, and, and then I'm uh, high, uh, high doses of enzymes. Uh, I'm on between, I take between um, 20 and 30 proteolytic enzymes a day. Now, somebody will say, well, that's too much. Well, I want to live. You know, what cost is life? I would ask you that. So that's, that's the way I look at it. Which enzyme are you using? I use, pro I use Wobenzyme, and I use um, other enzymes as well. Many enzymes. But I use, oh, Carl Ransberger is the man who, Dr. Carl Ransberger is the man who developed, who continued on the concept of, of, um, uh, of proteolytic enzyme therapy, and he has made that a worldwide concept. You can't go to any country in the world without finding uh, the um, Wobenzyme or in learning about somebody, some doctor, uh, not treating you with um, enzymes. So anyway, enzymes attack dangerous cancer cells. And I feel great. I feel great. I'm back here. I'm, I'm here, you know, leaning on you guys, right? Enzymes attack dangerous cancer properties. They degrade and they chew up the fibrin, um, unmasking the cell antigens, leaving them open for attack by the immune fighters. They remove the glue cancer cells use to attack, attach themselves to the vessel walls. All right, that's how they metastasize, and that's how they cause the cancer, you know, to metastasize and then stick on another area, right? And then they break up the immune complexes that are floating through the circulatory system, and then they improve the overall health of the patient, and they maintain this homeostasis. So, systemic enzyme therapy fights digestive disorders, cardiovascular disorders, inflammatory conditions, immune disorders, cancer, uh, chronic conditions such as herpes, HIV slash AIDS, um, also sports injuries, and aging. And I could actually, if we had time, I could give you studies from each and every one of these. This lecture is sort of an overview, and I've just sort of highlighted different points. Now, you want to get my books because... In the books, the uh, the book that um, they that they have here at Pilgrims has over a hundred conditions where you can use proteolytic ends. Yeah. You've written more than one book. Yeah. Yes, I've written fifteen books. <laughs> now, with ballooning healthcare costs, uh, we do know that ballooning healthcare costs must. We must have access to everything that we can to improve health. Enzymes through uncooked foods and through enzyme supplements can help every system in the body. And I hope that I've proved that to you. The better our body works, the better we'll feel and the longer we'll live. As we come to the end of our fantastic enzyme voyage, we've passed through the mouth, passed through the stomach, the small intestine, the large intestine, and into the systems of the body, and ultimately out, out into that great white porcelain void called, called the turlet. <laughs> By the way, I just want to ask you a question. Now think about it. This is really very meaningful for you. Think very, very seriously about this. By the way, was Darth Vader a nice guy with constipation? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Could digestive enzymes have helped? I don't know. In any case, be selfish. Be selfish to your health, to the health of your family, and to the health of your friends. Remember, don't let sickness cut you out of the picture.
Jumpstart your day. Jumpstart your life. Jumpstart your life's digestive doldrums with digestive enzymes. Fight systemic problems with systemic enzyme therapy. Take charge of your life with enzymes and have a great life and a great day. Remember, good health is a gift. Keep that gift. Let the enzyme force be with you always. And God bless you all. <laughs>